found yourself in this position? If that reminded you of yourself at any point in your artistic career, I'm here to help. Today we're going to be chatting art block. If you're here, you probably know what art block is, but just in case, let's do a quick recap. Art block is closely related to writer's block and not so closely related to <laughs> other types of block. Now, I'm not an expert, but I've experienced art block many times and it's not fun. Essentially, art block is what happens whenever you either have a lack of motivation, a lack of ideas, or a sort of I hate everything I draw mentality. And generally, it just leads to days, weeks, potentially even months or years of zero creative output. Now this can be a problem for several reasons. A, if art is just your hobby, it can just be really disheartening not having that wonderful thing in your life that you like doing when you're stressed. If art is your career, that essentially means that you might be losing income by having art block. And that's no bueno. And <laughs> what a coincidence, I am currently art blocked. In case you haven't noticed, I have kind of moved away temporarily from doing traditional art videos and I've done a little bit of crafting and baking and that's not because I've given up my art career. It's simply due to the fact that I've been extremely unmotivated and I've had a lack of ideas and also I've had some hand and wrist pain so I've been trying to rest me mono. As it stands right now, I have not drawn anything in weeks and I would like for that to be remedied. So together, we are going to go through the ways that we can beat art block and get back to our creative pursuits. Once you narrow down what exactly is causing your art block, then you can start to create solutions to get past it. So let's start with the most common form of why people have art block, the lack of ideas. Generally speaking, what I do whenever I run out of ideas is I hop onto Pinterest, which is really just a hub of creativity, and I probably lean on it a little too much, but let's be honest, it is just chock full of nuggets, okay? I go there for recipes, I go there for art inspo, I go there for reference photos, I even went there for therapy. If you're worried that the ideas that you currently have aren't good enough because we live and swim in a sea of saturation, don't worry. Even if you're creating art for just you and your cat, what you have to bring to the table is still worthy of being looked at and it's just worthy, period. The simplest thing I can think of other than Pinterest would be random word generators. You can either create a bucket of random words yourself and then select words from the bucket, or you can simply go to a website that is a random generator and it will give you words. And this is generally very helpful for jogging the mind and getting those ideas flowing. So as you might imagine, there are a number of random word generators out there on the interwebs, but in particular, the one that I found that I like is called Your Art Path, and it is specifically an art prompt generator. So some of the ideas that it gave me were a griffin perched on a cliff, a group of aliens making first contact with humans, and last but not least, a giant castle built into a mountain. I actually ended up generating a few more concepts and landed on a portrait of a person in traditional dance costume. Since I am part Mexican, I thought it would be cool to do a traditional Mexican dancer, so I gave her a really vibrant flowing dress, traditional hairstyle, and some pretty cute boots too. I would have liked to have spent a little more time on the details, but this was purely for exercise and I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. It's not my usual color palette, but I think it turned out pretty well. If your art block is caused by the actual process of making your art, it might be time to look into learning something. As artists, uh, the learning never really stops. There are always more things to study because I doubt any single person knows how to draw everything on earth. And since we don't, there exist places that we can view things that we don't really know how to draw very well. 
Up first in my list of recommended resources is adorkastock.com, which hosts a plethora of self-captured images in every pose imaginable, ranging from fairly normal to chaotic and unhinged to whatever this is. There's even a fancy foot book available for purchase. If you've got a little moolah burning a hole in your pocket, New Masters Academy offers a variety of paid courses with in-depth instruction on art fundamentals by art educators. If you're often on the Van Gogh, or you just really like apps, Magic Poser app is a great option, but occasionally things do get a little funky, and the one drawback is that you can only access one type of model unless you invest in the paid version. And bringing up the rear, but not literally, because this one's only for reference from the neck up. We have referenceangle.com, which allows you to manipulate the posable head with different tilts, turns, and even facial expressions. You can also literally copy someone's art, not as your own, okay? I repeat, do not say that the art is yours. Simply copy it for practice. Um, a lot of artists don't like when you copy their art and share it, um, even if you credit them. Potentially the best way to be copying someone's art would be a draw this in your style, um, which there are tons of. Literally, just go to Instagram, search DTIYS, draw this in your style, and there will be thousands of prompts that come up. And it's basically someone has already created a work of art and they want you to copy the concept of the art, but they want you to do it in your style. So this is really a great way to fine tune your style while not having to also think of an original idea every time you make something. If you're having trouble because it's a lack of motivation, girl, me too. So the first thing that you should do is set some goals and make them small, okay? Because when we're on the struggle bus, we don't wanna be making like huge, monumental, earth-shattering, large goals, okay? Keep it small, small art. Like, literally just make small art. Take a teeny tiny piece of paper and draw the tiniest of doodles on it. Small works of art are generally a lot less daunting than large ones, so. Oh, you thought I was joking? No, we're about to make some small art. Seriously, grab yourself a teeny tiny piece of paper and some washi tape so it doesn't move around, tape that sucker to your desk, and get started. Now, you may be thinking that I'm a little on the nose with this literal tiny work of art, but if you consider how daunting a fresh, large, new canvas with all of its blankety-blank blankness staring into the depths of your soul, you might realize that tackling something much, much smaller is way simpler. An obvious concept? Yes. A novel concept? No, probably not. But hey. Like Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Oh, I really hope I don't get sued for that. And when you're here with me, we're gonna go over some obvious things sometimes because whenever we're stressed about our art, sometimes the obvious things don't come to mind. And I don't know about you, but sometimes a reminder of the obvious can be a lot more helpful than you might think. But yeah, I really wanted to draw a little frog buddy and that's exactly what I did. This little cutie took me probably less than 20 minutes, and I absolutely love him. I cannot be convinced that this is not the single greatest work of art I've ever made. I'm naming him Jellybean, and I would protect him with my life. Recently, I discovered that a great way to challenge myself creatively lay within a very simple idea, using a medium that makes me uncomfortable. I think this works because it helps me put focus on mastering the medium and takes focus off of the finished piece. Basically, the medium presents enough challenge in and of itself that I no longer care what ends up on the canvas, only that something ends up there at all. For me, that challenging medium is gouache. It's still so unfamiliar to me that I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it properly, and I've even worked with it a handful of times now. 
Have I looked up any tutorials or sat down to teach myself to use it though? Of course not. That would make too much sense. Which brings us to this moment, where I decide to undertake a complex, multi-layered replication of a world-renowned Japanese artist's work. Side note, I'm not going to tell you what it is that I'm painting, because I'm going to make a whole other video on it. But if you can guess what it is that I'm painting, I'll give you a little howdy doody shout out in the next video. Again, in my opinion, working with a medium that you're not super comfortable with might just give you that little boost of motivation that you need to work on another project that you're undertaking. So give it a try, won't you? For my last idea on how to get yourself out of an art block rut, we're going to take it back to the basics and do a little doodling together. So these are some of my favorite doodling pens. They're the Paper Mate Inkjoy and they're pretty cheap. They come in tons of colors and they actually write really smoothly. So go ahead and get out your favorite pens and let's do a little bit of doodling together. So the first exercise we're going to do here is nesting shapes. I'm choosing circles um, just because that's easiest for me and basically you're just going to draw your shape and then nest that same shape right inside of it over and over and over again until you've got something that looks like this and you basically just keep drawing these shapes and nesting them to your heart's content and you kind of just lose yourself in the process. I like to do this as a warm-up or just to relieve a little stress. Next, let's do an add to it exercise. So I originally saw this on Archer and Olive's website, and basically they just give you these little prompts and you are supposed to add to them. I really like this exercise because essentially you're given a starting point and then the rest of the creativity is up to you. So don't expect these to hang in the goog. They're gonna look a little rough, but the result is that you drew something and your mind was working while you were doing that. Our next exercise is boring but important. Repetition, which is exactly what it sounds like. Pick a shape and draw it over and over and over again. See how close you can get to that original drawing. It's a lot more difficult than you might think, but I find this exercise to be really helpful with consistency and pacing in my line art. And since it's almost Christmas, I really just couldn't pass up the opportunity to do a Christmas themed doodle, a free doodle. Um, a free doodle is basically just something I made up just now, and it means you are free to doodle whatever you want. Just put some stuff on paper, have fun, and let your creativity loose. This is not going to be perfect, so sit back, relax, and let your mind-body connection do all the work. My suggestion, use a pen. If you're using a pen, that means you can't go back and correct any mistakes that you make. And anyways, as Bob Ross always said, there are no mistakes. Just happy little accidents. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope everyone has a happy holiday season, and I also hope to see you in the next one. Kid at home when she goes on vacation for Christmas. Kevin!